Uh, welcome to the mess. This is my little indoor uh, workshop. I didn't show you how I built the last one, so I'm going to build a second one of these now. And I'm going to take you along and show you how I did it. Of course, the biggest challenge will be the angles, but we'll figure that out. I have over here this piece of board. It should be eight feet long. I'm going to put it in this vise. It's rather easy for me to cut it. Yes, it is ninety six and a half inches. There's the pencil. So I'll cut that right at four feet. This doesn't have to be exact exact now. But I will try to cut this as square as I can. exactly four feet but it was a little over eight feet as I said so I'm gonna cut a little off there wonder if I make a line for myself, will I be able to cut this square better? Worth a try. A little square. Yeah, of course, I need to make that one the same width as this one, which is five inches. So, I will take these two boards and cut them five inches each. Actually, it looks like I only need one of them. That's five inches there, and five inches there.
Now I'll flip that over. Now I have four of these sockets. I have a total of 49 and a half inches. So if I put them in four inches from either side, That leaves me with 41 inches total, and I need just three spaces. So 41 divided by 3 is almost 14. So 13 and a half, let's say, 13 and a half. And that's about right. What I have to make sure, I want these to be straight along the uh, this part to make it easy to put in. So I have to turn the socket just a little bit. These holes here are not straight across that way. Don't bother. I'll use these screws to mount it down. Now, need to turn that over. And here's the contacts on the back side. This is what this side looks like. I already put the wiring in and I recorded it. But I think I've thought of a better way of doing this. So I'm going to take this wire off and uh, I'll show you the other way. I won't show you the way that I've got this done on. I brought this in here mainly because out in my little workshop there I don't have a setup where I can put the camera at, at good angles so what I'm going to do I'm going to take my utility knife And I'm going to take off all of this outer coating so that I'm left with three separate wires. So now I've got them all stripped. I don't need the one that didn't have any coating on it because that's the ground. And as you might know, lamps, which is basically what this is, don't use a ground wire. So now here's the back side of the uh, light socket and you'll notice that these are colored in gold and these are silver, the screws themselves. That is for you to select which one and electricians usually take the white for what they call the live and the black for the return. Now of course alternating electricity there's no such thing as live and return but that's the way they do it. And the other thing is when you're connecting your wires as we're going to go from 
one to the next. In lamps, once again, this doesn't matter. But in some conditions, it uh, matters which way the current has to go. Well, alternating current is, as uh, they say, alternating. I can have the electricity, if it goes through this one from gold to silver, it's going through all four at, from gold to silver. And I don't know if that matters for the newer LEDs. The old indicescent bulbs, it didn't matter which way the electricity went through it. But in some conditions, if I hook this up gold to gold to gold, then they're hooked up in parallel, which will give me power drain of 8 watts plus 8 watts plus 8 watts plus 8 watts. If I were to hook them up gold to silver, then you go by resistance and the resistance of one bulb to the next bulb and I'm having extra resistance through the four. So what I need, I measure a white wire from gold to gold. I'll take my bill nose pliers which has a side cutter built in and cut it. What I need to do is make a crook in both ends. I hook that wire underneath that screw. Take a flat top screwdriver and screw it down. And then As you can see here now, the hook is turned up. You want it to turn so that it's flat, flat to the plate, and hook it in under that screw. Now I've got gold to gold connected on the first two. We got to measure now between not the one that I connected the wire to, but the other gold screw because they are combined with this plate going across between them. From that gold screw over to the first one here. I have a wire stripper somewhere, but I don't know where it is. So with the side cutters, I'll gently cut that just so that I'm cutting the plastic and not the wire inside. And make a loop. Now I'll loosen this screw, because one screw is usually loose on these and the other one is tight. Not sure what the reason behind that is. And I'm putting the loop in this way because I want the wire to go over on this side and stay off of these two black these two silver screws. You have to hook it around the screw counterclockwise because when you put down the screw that's how you tighten it counterclockwise. And if you try to put it in the other way the tightening of the screw will push the wire out on you.
Now, as you can see, I got a single wire, gold, there. It goes to gold, and then starting from this other screw, gold to gold, then on that screw, and then come from this screw, gold. to gold on the last one. Now you'll see why I didn't want to have those silver colored screws covered up. The black wire needs to go silver to silver. And if I had the white wire running over the black, the silver screws, then they, it would be in the way. And your toys cut once. I'm going to zoom that in and show you what I meant about this uh, putting on the screw pushing out the wire. So you see how uh, the wire is being pushed out? There, now it's going around the screw counterclockwise. And it actually gets pulled in when you tighten up the screw. So those are connected. Now these aren't really all that heavy, so I don't need a really strong hook to hold it up. I'm going to have one of these on each corner. I went to find a sacrificial cord. This is a cord off a of some Sony product, the adapter. Uh, it takes 300 volts, it says here somewhere, 105 degrees Celsius. So it'll be plenty of strong enough for the little bit of power that these four LEDs is going to uh, draw. This stuff you see this is what I use for the wires in between but it's too stiff to use as the plug-in cord so I cut the piece off that plugs into the adapter this is multi-strand wires as you can see so you have to take them and twist them first. So they be twisted together and act as a single strand. And then of course, just like the other ones, we will bend them into a little loop. Put the white one onto the gold screw. And put the black one. Make sure you've got the 
hook going around it counterclockwise. These multi strand on they're even worse for uh, being pushed out than the um, single strand ones. And there, that's connected. Our next thing is when we're moving the cord out here, we don't really want it to be moving in on our connections inside here. A staple, as you can see, it will go over the top of that. So, make sure you've got that directly in the center. Like so, there is a little bit of movement because the staple didn't go all the way in tight. Okay, I'll need to get another staple in there. Now, you see there's not much movement inside. For this one, I've decided to use this chain. Of course, what I need to do Make sure I got it equal so that it lifts straight. And then just hook it onto that screw up there. I have two of them. Thus, let's put four bulbs in there. And plug it in. Voila, we have light. These lights are LED, 9.5 watts, but most importantly, this 5,000 Kelvin daylight, it has to be at least 5,000. I understand that you can get higher than 5,000, but I have never seen it. That's the time rating, 20,000 hours. 9.5 you can get in that type of uh, bulb up to, I believe it is 15, which would replace a 100 watt bulb. This replaces a 60 watt. And there we have it. This shelf now is done. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.